CWF Network. <laughs> yeah, that happened. Hey, hi, hello, yo. How you living? What? How you living? What? How are you living, friends? It's me, your personal Snapple Cap, and I'm back with a whole nother random fact. But, but, before I can begin, you know that I gotta make sure you are following the network that brings you the biggest content in the smallest pieces, because you know, homie, don't play that. Are you supporting the Conversations with Friends network? If not, I am here to tell you how. If you're trying to follow us on SoundCloud, you can go to soundcloud.com slash CWF podcast and, you know, hit that follow button. If you are trying to follow us on Instagram, we are at CWFP underscore. You can look us up and definitely hit that follow button. Definitely be sure to check out our website, uh, CWFpodcast.com, where we have all of the podcasts that we have out up. We have all the episodes up. We have profiles on all the hosts up. So stay in tune with the happenings and make it happen on your end and I can make it happen on mine. So you guys want to know something funny? If you grew up on Disney Channel, you probably remember this show called Out of the Box, right? And they took a regular old box and they turned it into this magical thing for a half hour. Right around the same time I started watching Out of the Box, I ended up watching In Living Color and like a whole lot of In Living Color because I think it was like in syndication so it was just rerunning a lot. And there was this hobo and there was a sketch called This Old Box and this hobo with this old box like turned like water into wine. It was so amazing to me as a young kid, especially watching Out of the Box. So in my childhood head, I thought I could make anything possible out of the box because of Out of the Box and this old box, the sketch from what we're talking about today. Today we are talking about the sketch comedy show In Living Color, which is probably one of my favorite sketch comedy shows over everything else, second being Mad TV. And so today we're going to talk about how In Living Color changed, you know, the game for, you know, African-American sketch comedy and how Keenan Ivory Wayans, the man who created it, had to fight for his show. But before we talk about how he had to fight for his show, we got to talk about how his show came to be, you know, in general. And it's pretty, pretty great how it happened. In the early 1980s, Keenan Ivory started working with Eddie Murphy. And in 1988, they created his comedy show Eddie Murphy Raw and then a couple years later he made his first feature film called I'm Gonna Get You Sucker and most of us probably know what that movie is because it's you know a classic from that film Fox executives came up to Keenan Ivory and they proposed to him the option of creating his own sketch comedy show and they gave him free reign to do whatever he wants they wanted him to keep it you know not safe but, you know, within the confines of Fox's, you know, guidelines, but still pushing boundaries. And that is exactly what he did because they allowed him to. And so that's how we get to April 15th, 1990, which is the first day that In Living Color aired. Now, what it came out sooner, but Fox waited a entire year before they put out the pilot of In Living Color because even though it pushed the boundaries, they wanted to make sure that it was, you know, I guess still TV safe. So they called in, you know, advisors from the NAACP. And even though that was, I'm guessing, a smart move, Keenan Ivory said that the, you know, ideologies between having an older generation, you know, critique on a younger generation show, they kind of miss the jokes. They kind of, you know, don't get the punchlines as much. And after that, Fox still greenlit it. And In Living Color came to pass. Now, the amazing thing about Keenan Ivory Wayans is that no matter what project he was working on, he still incorporated, you know, his family members into it. And if you know about the Wayans families, you know that they are a large clan of a family. They have 10 of them all together. And in Living Color, six of them appeared throughout the show's five season run. It was Keenan Ivory, Damon Wayans, Kim Wayans, Sean Wayans, Marlon Wayans, and Dwayne Wayans, who played uh, as an extra every now and again, but was more so a writer. So he worked, you know, creating the sketches, but nonetheless, a family full of comedic genius. And they came together on this show. Now, one of the things I find absolutely amazing about the show is that just like 
Saturday Night Live, its counterpart at the time. It was the launching ground for a whole lot of careers of a whole lot of people that you probably know of today, but you really wouldn't notice them back in, you know, the early 1980s, 1990s, and, you know, the late 1980s. People like Jim Carrey started on In Living Color. Jamie Foxx is another guy who started on In Living Color. Takiya Crystal, if you've ever seen... Um, that's so Raven. Raven's mom in the show started on In Living Color. Uh, Jennifer Lopez was a fly girl. She was one of the dancers for In Living Color. Rosie Perez was one of the principal choreographers for In Living Color. And even still ha hilarious comedians like Margaret Cho and John Leguizamo, they, you know, tried out to be a part of the show, but they didn't make the cut. And so one of the most important things that Keenan Ivory wanted with this show was it was for it to be diverse in its comedy. And even though it was created by African Americans and was, you know, kind of geared towards African American culture, it wanted to be inclusive in the way that, you know, African Americans' point of views was seen. So a good majority of the sketches, you know, allowed for comedic freedom, allowed for comedic genius, and allowed for different voices to be heard throughout it. And so that's kind of what made it such a hit, such a popular thing of the time. And a lot of that popularity came from the fact that Fox gave Keenan Ivory the ability to be so free and flexible in his, you know, comedy writing and his comedic genius. But throughout its five seasons, it wasn't until around the fourth or fifth season, well, the end of the fourth, beginning of the fifth that Fox started to pull back its regulations on how free Keenan Ivory could be in his writings and in his expression of himself. And so towards the end of the fourth season, Keenan Ivory had left the show completely. He just walked away. And that's due to the fact that Fox took his shows and started syndicating it, you know, putting on the replays without his permission. And he saw that as, you know, corporate stealing essentially, and he left the show entirely. He said that he wanted his comedy to be from an African-American point of view, but now they have, you know, all white consultants. And that's kind of, you know, spinning in the face of what he wanted his project to be. And because he had such creative freedom for the entirety of the project, for them to come through at this point and, you know, take away what it was that he was doing made him feel, you know, unappreciated. And that's exactly why he left. And when he left, his brother's... Damon and Sean, they left as well because they weren't under contract, but his sister Kim and I believe it was Marlon, they had to stay because they were under contract, but once their contract was up, they also left. And this goes to help me, you know, understand that nothing is without its flaws, nothing is without its, you know, dark sides, but from this amazing show came so many amazing things. You wouldn't have famed actors like Jim Carrey, so many amazing sketches from In Living Color are still like classic icons today, like Homie the Clown, Homie Don't Play That. Um, one of my favorite sketches from the show, one of my favorite comedians actually is Kim Wayans, and she does this parody to a uh, Crystal Waters song, you know, the da dum dee da dum dao. She does a parody to that, and to this day, I still laugh because that is absolutely funny to me. But after the ending of In Living Color, um, a good majority of the cast members branched out to do their own things. Sean and Marlon Wayans went on to do the Wayans Brothers show. They went to do on White Chicks. Kim Wayans was a actress on that show. Jamie Foxx became Jamie Foxx. Jennifer Lopez became Jennifer Lopez. Rosie Perez became Rosie Perez. Carrie Ann, who was one of the Fly Girls as well, is now a judge on Dancing with the Stars. So you can see how you know, all you really need is a chance. All you really need is a launching ground and someone to, you know, believe in your ideas. Someone to take a chance on you. And that's exactly what uh, Fox did with Keenan Ivory, what Keenan Ivory did with a whole bunch of his cast members, providing them, you know, the time, space, and the opportunity to be great. So I'm about to go do me some stretches and try to bust me a fly girl move. I am Corday, highlighting moments in history, and you can catch me in two more weeks for another episode of Yeah, That Happened, only on the CWF Network. We're bringing you big content in small pieces. Lady off. Follow us on Instagram at CWFP underscore. This is Conversations with Friends Network. Okay, bye.